of a cadet, and when I say cadet, I mean all under trainees, uh, should be put in a lab because though it's usually unused and untouched, very fresh, whenever you put them in a situation, they'll come with the most brilliant ideas and that only a cadet can give you. And I'll give you a few examples. So uh, back in the academy, there was this uh, uh, aquarium which had become really dirty, so it needed cleaning. Uh, the divisional officer saw it and he's like, why is it so dirty? So he called a six term and he said, you know, I want this clean by the end of the day. Of course, things moved downwards and it ended up, uh, the job uh, went on to a first termer. So, uh, here's the thing about a first termer without guidance uh, or without supervision. He's like an unguided missile. He'll hit a target. He may not hit the target, but he'll hit some target. So he says, okay, sir, no problem, I'll do it. He goes, he gets a bucket full of soap water and he kept it next to the aquarium. He took out all the fish, he put them in the soap water and ironically while he was cleaning the aquarium, these poor fish were drowning and dying behind, right behind him. And then he saw the divisional officer coming and by then he had done cleaning, he had also killed the fish by then. So when he looked down, he was like, why the hell are they floating? They were apparently dead. The divisional officer comes, he's coming from there. So he put all the fish back into the aquarium. Now they're all floating, but the aquarium is clean. So the divisional officer comes first, he sees, oh, clean aquarium, where are the fish? So when he looks up and he says, what did you do to the fish? He's saying, so here's where the brilliance of a cadet comes out. He says, sir, I didn't do anything. I put them in a bucket, they fought amongst themselves and died. <laughs> so, uh, he's like, oh really, wow. Says, you do one thing, you tell your six termers to report to me and DTO your office in drill order. So he says, yes sir. So he says, okay, what will you say? So he says, sir, I'll ask my six termers to, that they've been called to uh, DTO your office in drill order. He says, okay. By whom? So this guy mid-conversation says, yes sir, and turns left. So this guy is like, what was that? So the cadet very innocently says, sir, you said by whom? <laughs> so I really feel like there should be some meditation and yoga in, uh, you know, the Naval Academy. Not for the cadets, it's for the training staff to deal with cadets, you know, because <coughs> He's like, why will I tell you to turn left mid-conversation? Not by whom, by whom? So he said, oh, by whom, sir? So by you? He said, of course, by me. What my name? So of course he did not know that. So he said, you please get out of here and make that penta pack. So the story, the lesson here is for the six hours or, you know, or even for the rest of your service is you need to invest a lot in the first term. If your first term are smart, I think you will be out of trouble most of the time and this will hold good for you in service as well. If you can invest time in making your team smarter, you will have a more comfortable time. But then there are times when the uh, division officer also doesn't know the names of, uh, you know, all the cadets. And there are times when cadets try to take advantage of that. Have any of you tried it? Okay, not supposed to say yes. Good, that's a smart audience. So, uh, yeah, so there was this time when we used to live in, of course, back in uh, Goa, we had dormitories. So th that day, it was a Sunday, everyone was at liberty, <coughs> except first termers, for some reason. Yeah, there could have been many reasons for that. So we were told to clean uh, dormitories, everyone else was away. So here's the thing, if you put a bunch of first termers together, what will they do? Well, whatever they do, they'll not do what they're supposed to do. <laughs> so they were definitely not cleaning and they were having a dorm treat. So, uh, suddenly the devil officer, someone said, the devil officer is coming. So everyone got started cleaning up. But one, this guy who's a smart act party, he said, always be, you all know who you are. <laughs> and amongst your course also, you know who that one smart act party is, who will always get everyone in trouble. So this guy, while the others have gone cleaning, this guy gets up, puts on a lungi, goes into the bathroom and starts cleaning uh, clothes. So everyone wondering what he's doing, but anyway, the devil officer arrived, he caught them. So they all got what they deserved. They were rolling or they were in Murga position. Meanwhile, they go, he goes to the bathroom and he sees this guy is diligently washing clothes. So he asked him, who are you? 
this guy looks up and he says, Sir, CB. <laughs> so now, here's the thing. The division officer may not know all cadets, but he knows all CBs. He said, you come here. But he, who are you? So by then, with that eye contact, he realized that he had messed it up and he started rolling. So, in that lungi only. Anyway, so, next day in our uh, classroom, our, one of our third termers landed up. And uh, he said, yeah, who was that? Who was that first team who wanted to act like CB? Come here, come here. So that, he very sheepishly got up. He came, he said, get into Murga. So now he's in Murga in front of the whole class. Now, he, now the third termer tells him, now say, I'm an idiot. So this guy out of nowhere says, sorry sir, I can't say that. So we are all wondering, this guy is in Murga position. Yesterday he got caught almost, you know, trying to pass off as a CB. Where is this sudden ego coming from? So, and even the third time I lost it, he's like, what do you mean? So I'm going to give you a tight kick, you better say it. So he says, sorry sir, I can't say it. So we are all looking at him, we are looking at our, you know, the watches and we are like, Aaj to lunch nahi hone wala hai. So, then he gave us one last look to, you know, that we had a chance to plead and get him to say it. So we all indicated, yeah, bol de. Then he gets up, he brushes his shirt and he says, guys, usually I wouldn't say such a thing. But since you're all forcing me, I'll say it. Sir is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so that day we had, we were cream rolling for lunch and dinner. And the beauty of it is, he was very innocent about it because when we were rolling uh, at night that day, I, I actually was next to him, so I asked him, why would you say that? Like, why? And he telling me, I said, I said, I I like, wow, I just continued rolling. <laughs> but the thing is this, that one, now when we meet, you know, you'll, uh, whenever you meet your course mate many years later, these are the only moments that you're really going to remember. So I would say, just take them in your stride and move on and like, don't take things so seriously. So I believe uh, uh, after passing out from here, there'll be subleftins who will go for their subleftin afloat phase. So that was equivalent of our midshipman phase. Then that's when we, when you know, after our secret days, we would go. And midshipmen hold a lot of power in the fleet. You think I'm joking, but I'll tell you how. So this new set of subleftins had joined, and we were. I was doing the first appointment on Virat, and new midshipmen had uh, joined the ship. And uh, uh, you know, just their luck. This first, th th they joined, and the next day we were sailing out. And uh, it was a, uh, you know, rough seas. It was so rough that even Virat felt, we were on Virat, and we were on Virat was feeling a little bit, a bit of a roll. And it was so bad that there was a crane, there's a huge crane that is usually uh, secured to the uh, deck of the ship. It broke loose and it fell off at sea. Let alone the midshipmen, not even the officer of the watch noticed it at night. So in the morning, at uh, you know dawn, the commanding officer arrived and he was shocked because that space was empty and of course uh, he is responsible. So he said, where's the crane? Now the moment he said these words, everyone in the bridge froze and everyone is looking in the direction of the crane or where the crane was supposed to be. Except this midshipman. Midshipman is looking at his watchkeeping officer because he knows Kum Fir Ke Mere Pe Yame Wala Hai. So commanding officer said, yeah, OW, where's the crane? So OW first looks at the direction, then he goes one step ahead, looks down in case the crane is somewhere else. And then he looks at the watchkeeping officer and says, yeah, where is the crane? Now the watchkeeping officer, as if they have not done a diligent job enough, so he also goes up and he also looks around a little bit. And then he looks at the most responsible guy on the ship, he looks at midshipman and he says, yeah, where is the crane? And the midshipman, without even looking in the direction of where he is supposed to look, says, I'll find out, sir. <laughs> Commanding officer lost it. He said, you'll find out. Son, do you even know where the bloody crane was? Dude, can you tell me on which side of the ship the crane is? You know, usually. So he says, so very confidently. So that's the beauty of midshipmen. You know, they have confidence if nothing else. So he said, so the port side. Like he had a 50% chance of getting that right. And of course he got it wrong because it was on the starboard side. So he said, it's the port side. He said, son, it's on the starboard side. So he says, Sir, your starboard, my port. <laughs> so the governor also said, Listen, at this point, he's less important than the crane to me, so please get, you know, get him out of here. And of course, they got him out of there. And uh, the, of course, the navigating officer must have got a earful from the commanding officer 
for you know the answers for the midshipmen so at the end of the day and the navigating officer then anyway, he very busy end of the day he caught hold of that uh, the, the midshipman he said yeah you know grow up get out of your cadet phase you can't get away with everything with i'll find out sir what do you mean i'll find out sir that bloody crane has fallen at sea whom will you ask god you please be careful and i don't want to hear these words again so he says fair enough now uh, the next day i mean we went back on the crane and we were back at sea and the next day the fleet staff was embarked so the fleet commander as usual would like to talk to the midshipmen so he called the midshipmen and he said yeah are you guys doing something for your living he said yes sir are you learning something yes sir so he said okay i'm going to ask you a basic question do you know the weight of the ship so the uh, midshipman says sir do you want to know the weight of the ship with the aircraft embarked or without the aircraft embarked <laughs> you know the fleet commander was mighty impressed and the uh, commanding officer also felt a little guilty that you know was i wrong you know did i say too much yesterday it's cuz such a smart guy so uh, the fleet commander says okay son tell me with the aircraft embarked he says so that i don't know sir <laughs> so he was little taken aback he said okay then tell me the weight of the ship without the aircraft embarked this so that also i don't know sir <laughs> please get the, these guys out of here i'll talk to your commanding officer so in two days of their arrival basically the commanding officer and the navigating officer had already had enough of them but they had not had enough so back then on virat we had the regulation for you know mobile phone usage wasn't hasn't hadn't taken place as yet because it was so new and a, a lot of us on the ship had uh, mobile phones but yeah there was a general thing that you're not supposed to use your mobile phones so we made a code word for everyone below xo so except ceo and xo everyone on the ship knew this code word and the code word was lieutenant mutanna bridge so when the people on the bridge would know when there is network so they'll say when they say somebody there announces lieutenant mutanna bridge it was an indication we could go and use our mobile phones so as luck would have it the midshipman was on the bridge and his phone pinged so he realized there's network and he immediately very proudly because he wanted to be part of this secret op and he made an announcement uh, left mutanna bridge so right next to him there's somebody standing and he's looking at him and saying yeah what happened i'm left mutanna <laughs> so he's saying Oh sir, you didn't have to come all the way. It is a code word. I said, Oh, is it for what? He said, Sir, there is mobile network. People can go and use their mobile phones. He said, Oh wow, who all know this? He said, Everyone except CEO and XO. He said, Oh, that's nice to know, because you have no clue who Lefin Mutanna is. That is Lefin Mutanna. You have no clue who XO is, because I am XO. And thirdly, I am wearing commander stripes. how the hell did you you know believe that i am lieutenant mutanna so he saying i'll find out sir <laughs> so you know next day we went back to harbor nobody was allowed out on liberty but uh, uh, there was a nomination required for parade and they would needed a midshipman to do oj duties so virat was nominated and we thought we'll send that midshipman to so commanding officer said no chance they've got me in enough trouble these two they'll screw it up no way so he said sir he doesn't have to do absolutely anything he just needs to stand there as og2 so i don't think they'll uh, you know mess it up so we can send him i said okay now he has a parade now he's standing there he's gone for a few days of practice he goes and he's standing as og2 See, sometimes it's not always the fault of the midshipman. The situation such arises that you could get in trouble. But his presence of mind was pretty good because he was standing there as OG2, and uh, the inspecting officer came. And when he came to the OG2, he realized that OG2's fly was open, the zip was open. So he looked at him and said, "Zip, open, karo." So OG2 takes uh, says, "Ji, Shriman." He takes one step. and he closed inspecting officer zip unfortunately even that was open and that's all for me thank you very much you've been a great audience uh, all the best i'll see you guys outside